Well here we've got a pretty beat up basis of a rotary table. Uh, when I got it, that's how it was. It won't turn at the moment because there's a gear wheel in there. But uh, that's all there was. So, what we did, let's uh, try and show a bit of detail here. Uh, you might see in there, there is a worm wheel. And that engages on radius cut gears on the uh, center hub. Now what I'm going to do to sh try and show what I did with this to make it something useful uh, is to now reassemble it with the parts that I made. Lighting isn't very good I'm afraid but we'll manage. Alright, well I'm going to put the uh, first piece back in and this was made, I'm going to experiment here actually to try and get focus. Alright, this is sort of working. Focus is a problem. This uh, drive shaft is turned down such that we have there you should better see there's a key in a keyway and that engages with the worm wheel. At the very end we've got a small cut which takes a set screw. There's another cut there for a set screw. Now turning it round to see the other end. That's basically the uh, outer end. There's a hole there which is threaded for a locating screw and the cross pin is to engage in the uh, outer piece which we'll see in a moment. Now I'm going to put this back in, it's going to involve a lot of hassle, we'll cut the video out once it's in. Let's see where my keyway is. Well, after some fighting and fiddling, <laughs> believe me, getting this into the uh, worm gear and finding the keyway is difficult. But anyway, we're back in place. There are two set screws here, which engage in the uh, small cuts on the shaft, so that gives location. Now the next piece to go on, I'm trying to get a close up of this as well, use the same technique. There we go. That is the end that's going to go onto the shaft. And we've got uh, two cuts there for the cross pin. And turning it round, this is going to take the uh, This is going to take the um, calibrated dial and again we've got a keyway we put a nut on the end. So that is going to go on here and as the locating screw to keep it in place. Oh, this lighting is terrible for what I'm doing here. And then the business end here. We'll try close ups again and see what we can get. There we are, there's the keyway. Two handles. And what we might be able to see, not well, probably won't be very clear. Can you see some. Uh, graduations on there, there we are, that one shows up. Alright, so this can go on the end here, onto the uh, key. 
<clears throat> then the nut to retain. Now have you got that far? <laughs> We've now got a calibrated wheel, which incidentally is equivalent to, it's marked in a hundredths, tens and hundreds, and one revolution there is 10 degrees. There are marks on the table which will help explain that in a, in a moment. And the other thing is here is how to uh, set the uh, table in a particular position. One more close up. Now this is a piece of bar. You may or may not be able to read the writing on there. This end is a little pointer and there's another pointer. Three holes there. One is for a locating pin, one for a screw and the other one is uh, for a locking device. Now that's been filed off to a slight angle, mainly so we could get parallel to the shaft. So we'll put that in place, put that on the pin, locating pin, we've got a screw to go in there, let me turn this around a little bit more that way, is that any good? I don't know, the lighting's lousy. Screw in there. And then we have one of two, one more close up, one of two locking devices. Uh, it's got a hole in it for putting a bar if necessary to um, tighten down. And you might just see at the end there's a about a sixteenth, three thirty two of brass which is sweated on. And the reason for that on this and the other locking device is to avoid steel to steel contact because this locks down pretty tight and whatever whatever we're doing on here this is still a little bit tight because I've already done oh I've already done that screw up haven't I let's uh, take it there you are that's the locking point so we'll back it off all right, so there we are. We've got now a means of reading the scale. Let's see if this is going to work. God, this thing is darn heavy. There we go. Give you some idea. It's a tiny pointer and it needs lots of light to see what you're doing. There we go. There you can see that. All right, and the other locking device, like the other one, but uh, longer. That goes in here. It's, uh, it's not even in frame. No, it is. Let's do that up. All right, now that one, um, that locks the uh, whole unit, the rotate the um, table to the base. So we've got two locking devices, which means we can button it up really tight in any given position. Right, all we've got left now is uh, to put back the uh, cover plate. We've got four small, rather beaten up, gnarly countersunk screws they need dressed or replaced but what the eye doesn't see when it's turned over I'll speed this up in a moment yeah those screws are pretty poor anyway obviously we don't use it this way up so coming back to its position there. There we go. So in use the options are varied. I can put a chuck on here. I've got a one inch bore down the middle 
and uh, somewhere I've got a mandrel which goes one inch to the ID of a chuck I think so I can quickly put a chuck on there got a couple of tea nuts and there's a, there are a couple of holes in there already I don't know whether I put them there basically you can find a way to clamp things on so if you imagine the studding here would go through a chuck either through a chuck or clamp down whichever and then there are two screws two, sorry two um, holes in the casting one each side for mounting to whatever base you're working on and the only other thing I was going to show which I forgot to show when I held this up is now uh, you should be able to see on the underneath of the table a scribe mark and there's another one round there and another one beyond it. The reason I showed that was to go from one scribe mark to the other is three turns to three. And that puts us on the next scribe line. There are 12 scribe lines so each of those sections is 30 degrees which is why this has got three turns 10 degrees, 20, 30. Alright so anywhere in between even going on tenths of a degree if necessary and locking down in a given position dropped a tea nut somewhere there it is uh, you can actually produce any number of divisions if you work it out tenth of a degree 3600 options uh, so whatever works on here and however it's mounted basically you've got a, a, a lot of options for a division I hope that gives a little bit of interest as to what you can do with what was otherwise perhaps partly a piece of junk. <laughs> there we are, junk. <laughs>